Numerical Computation, Chapter 4, MATLAB Video. Let's talk about effective programming. Now we want to compute a vector product of two vectors, which are stored in x and y of length n, and we want to generate a z vector where each element is the product of the corresponding element in x and y. So we're going to do it in three ways. Method one, we will not allocate memory space for z in advance, and we will just let MATLAB allocate it as the z grows as we go through a for loop. Okay, so what we do, let's generate a random vector for x and a random vector for y with length n. I want clear z to make sure z is not previously existing. And this command here, CPU time, means that from now I'll start to count the CPU time and it will end here. So the CPU time used for compute this for loop will be stored in T. And then I go through a for loop, go through each element in X and Y, and I do the product of XI times YI, and I put it in Z, in position I. Now remember, Z is not predefined, so each time here, MATLAB has to adjust the length of the Z vector, add it one to it each time, make it one element longer until you finish your for loop. Okay? So this is actually a one great advantage of MATLAB, that it allows you to do that, that you do not have to predefine the space for the variable. Okay? But that freedom comes at a cost. Let's look at our second method. That is, I am going to allocate the space for z in advance, and I still use a for loop. So before the for loop, I will allocate the space. So z, I know, I just give it a zero vector of length n. Okay, And then you compute it using the for loop. And finally, method three, because MATLAB already has a function built in to perform this task, which is this dot multiply notation that takes a vector x and multiply with the vector y and returns a vector z exactly as we wanted. So we just call the MATLAB function. Okay, and then we will also compute the CPU time it takes to perform this as well as the CPU times it takes to carry out this for loop with Z already pre-allocated. Now here is the result and CPU time measured in seconds for different values of N. The first one is N equals to 5000. So with method one, it took about three seconds. And for method two, it took about 0 0.24 seconds. And for method three, it's so small, it's just zero. You can't even notice it. And let's double the number n, going to 10,000. And then in method one, it grows to 14. And method two is about 0.5 seconds. And method three is still zero. So you will have to increase n pretty big to see some CPU time using method three. Say one million, it will take 0.3 seconds. And what happens to method two? Well, when you go to one million, this is going to take about 49 seconds. And for method one, well, this number is so big, you're going to sit in front of the computer and wait and wait and forever. So um, the dynamic allocating of memory space for variable is very, very flexible for programming, but it's slow. Okay, and you might be wondering oh, why method 3 is favored over method 4. That is, method 3 is pre-programmed in MATLAB and pre-compiled. So you have an executable file in the MATLAB program there that will do it. And while in method 2, you are still doing dynamic compiling. So it takes much longer time. It's dynamically compiling your code and make it an executable file. Okay, So this is way faster. So what's the moral of the story? 
Well, if there is a predefined MATLAB function, use it. Okay, now let's look at a Romberg integration. So you were supposed to write a program of the Romberg algorithm and generate this triangle. So here I will show you some results that I have. So you could probably use this as a case study to test your code to see if it generates the correct answer. So we integrate this function cosine 2x e to the negative x on from 0 to pi over 2, and the exact value shall be this, up to 7, 8 decimal places. And here will be the Romberg triangle you will get. And you know that this shall be the most accurate one, and then you see it, it is actually closer to the answer. Now let's display the arrow for each element in the Romberg triangle. And we see clearly that um, this one is the smallest, right? Much smaller than that. Okay, and we are actually here not using many points. So this is the arrow by using one interval, and this is two, and this is four, and this is eight interval. That's a very small number, eight. Okay, so here's another example where um, I expand the integration interval to 2 pi, so I'm integrating from 0 to 2 pi, and the exact value shall be here. And here's the Romberg triangle that we computed, and you know this shall be the best choice, and you see it is pretty close to the exact value and much closer than all the other numbers. And let's look at the arrow. So um, the arrow in this triangle is displayed here, and we see that this one has the smallest arrow. It's a bit smaller than that one. Now comparing the arrow of this example put to the previous one, we see that arrow is bigger here. So why is that? Well, that's exactly because the integration interval is extended to 2 pi instead of pi over 2. Therefore, our h got much bigger. Okay, so the arrow is bigger. So in principle, you should actually insert more points here to achieve a comparable accuracy. So in MATLAB, there are a couple of um, um, quadrat rules that's already defined. Um, one of them is called quad, and this one, the syntax is the following. You call quad and you send in the function that you defined, and then a, b is the interval of your integration. Tolerance is how big you want the arrow to be. And trace is a, another option that you can, if you put it to be non-zero, then the MATLAB will actually show you the development of the integration. Okay, for example, if you have a function f3.m defined and you want to integrate from 0 to 2 pi and the tolerance is um, 10 to the negative 6 and you want the MATLAB to show you the development of it, then that will be your command. There are other um, numerical integrations and recursive ones implemented in MATLAB. These are called quad L and quad 8. Okay, the syntax and the usage is very much the same as for quad, but it just carries out a different computation. And in these functions, they use a higher order recursive algorithm. So in quad, what is being used is Simpson's rule, which is a fourth order base algorithm. And here, people put in higher order quadratures. So all these methods are adaptive methods. So um, they are coded in C and then compiled and linked up to MATLAB. Okay, so give it a try and go to MATLAB and check these guys out and play with them.